Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Alert coming at you from Token 2049 here in Hong Kong. Today, I got to sit down with Richard. He is the CEO and co-founder of Smart Containers. Richard, welcome. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Now, what are you guys doing? Can you give me the elevator pitch? What is Smart Containers? Sure. It's about six years ago, we started out by developing this shiny piece. It's an insulation technology for buildings. We pitched that to a pharma company, Novartis, in Switzerland, and they asked us, well, could you build us a container to protect our temperature-sensitive pharmaceuticals? Mm -hmm. So we did that. Six years later, we're uh, the number four in the market globally wow. in the space. And now we're venturing into food. So we have a second division now called Food Guardians, and here uh, it's, it's more consumer-driven. And uh, so that's why we're doing an ICO mm -hmm. um, to grow these both fields. We are putting, putting the containers on the blockchain to reduce the admin of these assets and also to facilitate the payment process. Because when you do pharma containers, that's not such an issue. But if you're administering, hopefully at some point, 100 million boxes, it needs to be super efficient. Otherwise, you have people chasing after these boxes all the time and it needs to be cost effective. And I think this is what blockchain will bring to the table. Yeah, I, I'm a big enthusiast of really blockchain's potential to revolutionize the way we ship goods from point A to point B and every point in between. Supply chain is a massive use case for it. And I love companies that are, are leveraging this technology yep. to bring around these benefits. Now, I think the thing that's important to point out here, you guys aren't just like a white paper ICO. You don't just have an idea. I mean, you've got, you know, Novartis as a customer that's huge you know you're yeah. fourth biggest in the in the industry at the moment that's really great can you tell us a bit about the existing company as it is yeah so um, we have two applications uh, one is called SkyCell so this is the farmer application um, so these are containers that transport temperature sen sensitive pharmaceutical products mm -hmm. in air freight so there it's about being extremely reliable so our sales pitch here to the pharma companies is the reliability aspect uh, the second one is actually weight. So our containers are significantly lighter and smaller than the, than the market leader, and that produces cost savings, but also CO2 savings. So I think these are the three components that, that uh, is the pitch for the pharma industry. Now, the food industry is slightly different because one, it's becoming a globalized market. So people mm. are used to having strawberries in winter in Europe and That's having it. salmon every time of the year everywhere in Tokyo. So somebody needs to ship that around. And uh, so we're bringing our technology to the food side. Um, we have launched customers here on the airline side already that we will announce in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are designing a box for regional distribution. That's where we see the strongest potential. Oh, interesting. So this rise, people ordering online and having the ship stuff shipped to their homes. This is really the trend. And there we're designing a reusable box that lives for about one to two years. Uh, can be reused basically, mm -hmm. it could be used every day if the supply chain allows it, the setup, or it could be used as a transportation for to your home overnight. Wow, so it's not just the, the 40 foot shipping containers, it's actually no. small boxes it's that small. are going to be going on the back of a DHL truck or something. Yeah, correct. And of course, the, the fact that the airlines are already you know, interested, talk to yeah. you and saying, hey, we want to be involved in this, I think that's a real nod to the fact that you're developing something really interesting here, which is really cool. Now, I guess outside of, I guess specifically food and pharma, what future use cases can you see for what you guys are doing? Are, they, are you already thinking, well, can we can do this and we can do this? Um, I learned to focus. So we focused six years on pharma mm -hmm. and that led to success. So yes, there are other applications, but our next focus will be really getting into the food side because food is huge. And so that's why we need to focus and not look at other things. Yeah. There are many other up great applications in cold chain, but let's focus on breaking into the food market. We will also do this on a regional strategy. So we see a strong potential, for example, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, countries like Dubai import 95% of their fresh produce. That's so a this shocking is, amount. This is lamb from New Zealand. This mm -hmm. is meat from Japan. This is fish from Sri Lanka. This is vegetables from all over the world and this is all temperature control. So that's why, for example, Middle East, we see a strong potential there. Um, but I think also within Asia, because same issues here. Yeah. Asia, Singapore is an island. That's it. So you need to bring it in. So that's why we look at these pockets where we think we can bring a lot of value. value, value. I think it's important to point out Singapore is not just an island, but it's an island where it's basically 
30 degrees plus every single day. Yep. And so again, temperature control is incredibly important in that situation. Now, you, the company you have already, you guys are already accepting cryptocurrencies. Yep. What's been the interest, I guess, from businesses around being able to pay you in cryptocurrencies? So why did we do that? Um, one was we want to try it out. Second was we saw cost efficiency potential. So when we rent out on the farmer side a container to a pharma company that's in India, mm -hmm. um, a week's rent is about $3,000, so we invoice them. Up to $150 are banking fees. That's crazy. And it takes up to three weeks to get paid. <laughs> so within crypto, we're talking about minutes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, in case of Ether, could be cents. Yep. So it's super efficient. And that even offsets the risk at this point of, of the fluctuation, because we're only exposed to it to a couple of minutes. That's it. So when we announced that, two days later, um, a big airline partner of our uh, called us up and said, we're working on the same, do you want to team up? Ah. So now we're working on this, we can't announce it yet, but I think in the next couple of weeks we can formalize this a little bit and then uh, talk about how we envision, their, from, from their point as an airline, we as a box provider, how do we put this into the bigger context of logistics? So what we want to create is an ecosystem where all players want to participate because it reduces the cost of everybody. Mm -hmm. So instead of every logistics company implementing SAP, to create an ecosystem on the blockchain, decentralized, which does all the work that normally the big SAPs does for these companies individually. And that should reduce the cost significantly. So instead of spending dollars per shipment to amortize SAP over years, we're talking about cents to move a container across the world. So I think this is where blockchain really has the potential to revolutionize logistics. And I think this is always the thing that's just so important to point out. Money talks, particularly to businesses, if you go to them and say, hey, I'm going to reduce your cost from a dollar to 10 cents, they're going to go, I'm listening. And that's Multiply really that by a billion shipments? Exactly. Yes, they're listening very much. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> now, what about the competition? I mean, we already have a lot of different blockchain, supply chain, logistics uh, companies out there. We got Modem, we have VeChain. What about those guys? Can they yep. cooperate or are they competition for you? Yep. So, Blockchain has many use cases and one is data security mm -hmm. or how the, I mean, the beautiful thing is this immutability of data. So for example, Modem, which is a friendly company, we're even in the same office building. <laughs> so these guys, they, they're designing data loggers and the data is then verified on the blockchain mm -hmm. and thus immutable. So their data loggers in the future could go into our containers, so we're complementary. Um, there are other projects that want to do different things in the supply chain. For example, Maersk teamed up with IBM to sort of put data for ship containers onto the blockchain. Yeah. We don't care if it's ship, air freight, road freight. We want to have data of logistics. And it's to avoid these calls, ah, oh, where's my container? Because all the logistics company between them, they don't communicate on a machine to machine level, they communicate by email. Mm. So these interruptions in communications, this is the problem in logistics. So for example, Kuhn Nagel estimates it takes up to 200 communications to move a sea freight container from Shanghai to, to Germany. That's crazy. So 200 communications that includes emails, phone calls, etc, etc. So if you can put that information as a red string on the blockchain and you attach all that information and you give access to, to the right parties, even in the future potentially customs. Yeah then they could really reduce the effort to, to move goods around the world. Yeah, and of course increase transparency and verifiability and all this. When somebody says, hey, I sent you that email or that communication app and the other guy says, well, I didn't get it. Yeah. They say, well, here it is. It's on the blockchain, yep. right? Now, as far as the, um, I guess the ICO goes, when can we expect to see the ICO? Um, and give us some more details about how the token sale is going to work. What's going to be the utility of the token? Yeah. So we have two types of token. Um, because these are two different projects. One is this ecosystem. We recognize we can't do this within the container business, otherwise it's a bias. So we let's say, let's, let's put this into a different entity. And so we're building up a team. We're raising an initial capital so we can build up this team. Uh, that's why we only raised four million for this project. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of start small and build on that. And yeah. proof, build on top of that. Second thing, that's what we, what we know how to do is the container side. So there we're raising 36 million. This is growth money for, for the farmer side and then also now entering the food side. So these are the two different tokens. 
One is a clear security token under Swiss law, the other one is a utility token under Swiss law in many other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. We are in private sale as we're preparing for, for the public ICO. Our goal is to finish up the, the, the private sale hopefully in April. Mm -hmm. It looks actually could already finish in the beginning of April. It's going really strong. And uh, then the pre-sale pre in, in sort of uh, mid-April and then the ICO in, in the May time frame. Okay, great. We will communicate the clear timeline one week once we complete the, the private sale because this will give us the the safety feeling that we can execute within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because right now with the crypto uh, sort of weather system, if you will, <laughs> going uh, private. as as uh, sort of a, a little bit of haywire ups and downs, people are sort of timing their, their investments. So we see that a lot. Um, but interesting enough, as we were running business, 95% of the funds that have been invested so far are fiat. So we're sort of this unusual ICO because the majority of the funds are uh, fiat, yeah, and so it's it's kind of a funny situation on our side. That is a bit of a funny situation, but nevertheless, you know the the investors are coming, and again, that really gives you that nod that yeah. we're doing something right here. Yeah. So, and what about the opportunities for you? I guess here in Asia, you know, how do you see partnerships being possible here? What can you offer the Asian market? Yeah. So I think this depends now on the application. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the pharma side. We will continue, um, on the one hand, working directly with pharma companies. So um, we work directly with the big guys. So this is what we do directly. The medium guys we do through partners. That's where we have the DHL, the Nagas of the world. Mm -hmm. We have the airlines, etc. Now on the food side, this is a red regional strategy. So the, the airlines are partners again to do the intercontinental stuff. But within a country, we are looking for the right partner that does, for example, the fish logistics in South Korea or mm -hmm. Japan or that moves high-end beef. So we are identi we're looking for these partners that help us yeah, get into the market there. Interesting. Now, final question for you. Where do you see cryptocurrency going in the year 2049? Do you, what's your future prediction? All right, so predictions about the future, like the weather, so <laughs> a lot of grain of salt. Um, I think it's not going to disappear. It has reached a point where it will become mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, even now, the, the the old school banking systems guys see this is not a threat, but this is just the new way of doing it. Um, I think also at the beginning of the internet, people saw it as a threat and not as the new way to to interact with That's users, right. to build up new business models, etc. And um, so I think it's getting there. Um, I think we see another two years until really mainstream people see you applications. I mean, mm -hmm. historically we've built now this protocol layer, and now we can build on these protocol layers real-life applications until they're really on the market. I think this will take another two years. But 2049, so that's really far. <laughs> that's a really long time away. <laughs> I mean, ideally, our containers, they need, I mean, they have a life on their own. Mm -hmm. They know I'm this week I'm with DHL, next week I'm with Emirates, week after I'm with Kudenage, zero admin. And uh, that makes it more affordable. In the end, logistics is the engine of global trade. And uh, if you believe that global trade is good, then reducing the cost to move goods is positive. So I think this is this is what we want to contribute is to reduce the costs and the friction to move goods around the world. I think that's going to come. You know, it's going to be you and a host of other companies all working towards this end goal. Maybe slightly different ways of getting there, but yeah. the end goal is to provide efficiency, use less resources, and moving things from point A to point B. Yeah. And of course, for the businesses, save that bottom line a little bit. Yeah. Triple bottom line. There you go. Richard, thank you so much for sitting down. Thank you for yeah. talking with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank pleasure. you. Thank you for having me.